Hello, in this video, I want to go to look how we can use it stable diffusion in Photoshop. We have it some plugin before, and if we look on one, one of the earliest that actually utilizing API key for stability or DALI, and then you can go tap line on outside your computer, online services, generate and bring back, but it does not utilize the power of your local installation. Another plugin was related stability art, which does connect to your local drive to your service also utilize models but if you look on our options it was quite a bit primitive so it does not have it all power of the stable diffusion and now we have a new one coming which allowed you to do all of this plus have it in painting out painting also provide a control net con connections which is quite better powerful what we want to use it and also it's have it additional options like upscaling and out painting and all options. So this is very, very powerful plugin. And let's go first look how we can install this plugin, what problems you may occur as you installing and how we can go use it. All the links that I will mention in this video will provide it down below in the description. First, what we want to do is going to the path I will provide again down below and download it file. You have a two options to download. If we scroll all the way down, You'll notice right here we have a CX. Let's go click on this file and we'll have it also a zip file. So you have a two files. The one is self installing. Another one you need actually open and install. So going from both of them. The first, it seems like very straightforward. You just download it, double time click and it should self install. However, if you're getting this kind of error, that is tell you don't have compatible applications. Even you do have, then we need to take another steps to do this. In that case, go ahead and download it zip file. After you finish downloading, extract this in your Adobe Photoshop, wherever it's located, plugins, directory. This is very important. Be sure your directory name precisely as a name on the zip file after that Photoshop that SD that plugin verse one two four. This is very important. Next inside you should have all of these files and folders. So this one is our first step. Next, we need to go inside the Photoshop, click on edit preferences. Click on the plugin directory and enable developer mode. So just click on this, click OK. And in some cases, you may need to restart Photoshop. In some cases, you don't. Our next step is modify web UI user bat that located in our folders in my installation stable diffusion, stable diffusion web UI, and it's located there. You may have a different installation. Just be sure you located this file and open to edit. Locate the command line argument and be sure you put it dash dash API. This way it's allowed stable diffusion to broadcast that access point so another applications can connect and work with this. Now you can save the file and just double time click to launch application. After your server up and running, you should receive command which says running on local URL. Now we're ready to go work inside the Photoshop. You do need to relaunch your Photoshop. After, if you go inside plugins, you should see connections as Adobe Photoshop Stable Diffusion. After installation completed, let's look what the plugin or panel can provide for us. Right here, I create empty file with 1024 by 1024 installations. And we're going to use the RPG version four with same prompt from manual I will provide down below a link for you for the, this model checkpoint and as well for the manual with all the prompts. We're going to use the 55 steps. At least is what recommended there. We scroll down. Notice right here, even I select my marquee, it's 512 by 512. And by the way, it does ask you to render. We actually need select area. So for example, when I select it, it is automatically will adjust. We'll take our CFG scale to six and we'll select our model to DMP to SA cars. After we're done selecting, we can go ahead and click generate. 
In our server, we can see as images generated. Currently, we're creating just one image to the batch size, and it does not take very long. One thing notice right here, you had plus and minus, or black, uh, green and white, check or X. So clicking on the check will accept and actually move this to one. If you move on the red, it will remove it all the renders, which kind of very nice. Right here, you can see we have it. Our image is generated. So let's look a little bit closer what we have on our image. Notice the image have a mark of the smart object. It means we can scale up and down. And if I'm going to open this image itself and we'll go verify image image size, the image size is 512 by 512. So even our original was 1024. It did not upscale to the size. However, if we're using not the rectangle, it's work a little bit different. So let me show you an example. Same, we'll just go ahead and we'll select half of the screen. So you know about this size. And notice right here it's changed 512 by 760, 781. Let's go to have it 768. That is a little bit more standard. And let's go ahead and render now. And here we have it, our image, same as a smart object. If we go ahead, unlock this, we need to click on the check mark, so we accept it. And now we can go inside, open image, image size. And you notice right here, we do have it 768. So keep this in mind. If you have the rectangle, sometimes if it will render as a smaller size, even your canvas is much larger. Okay, next options, we also have it image to image in painting as well as out painting. All of these options work same as you have it in your stable diffusion server with the image to image, with the in painting and out painting. As well, if you need to install control net, they will be also available inside the plugin. We can just go ahead and click on control net and working this way. It's have it also very nice presets, so it's helped a little bit very fast to work. For example, we can have it as a poses. And for the pose, we'll just go ahead, select our model, click as a set control net, which will reread the file. And we can also click on preview. Notice when it says main precision, it will also update what model are we using. And for this, we probably want to use it to open pause full and as well we probably want to use it open pause here as well there you go sometimes i notice like in this case it does not necessarily display what is have it and because this is still be kind of in beta production you could expect some ui um, mistakes but it's still working because it's still showing us the properties what we want to see showing the model and i also assign control net pause to this not every extension that you install in your control net in Automatic 11.11 will work or showing here because they have some limitations, what they can access and how work. But it's will showing the multiple control net that I currently set in my file. So for example, if we're going to settings and we're going to the control net, you'll notice right here, I have it set a uh, three models showing. Same like in Photoshop, if we go down, we have it one, two, and three. We have three control net models showing at this time. Okay, next, let's go look on a viewer. And here we can see all files that we render. You can also set as an option to save these files directly on your hard drive. So you keep it history if you need to come back afterwards. We also have record, extras, and settings. From the settings, important part, it is be sure the smart object checkbox is enabled. You'll notice what is happening. It will create this layer in a sense smart object so you can scale or modify without worrying affecting the co content of that layer itself. So it's kind of very useful. Even it's limited maybe to some filters in some cases, but generally it should work just fine. And tell you true, as I was experimenting with this, it does have a little bit different way how you're using in painting, out painting, 
a bit different from your normal control net, but it's very fast learning curve. And I will have a little bit more in depth video when we're going to take directly project and we're going to work on the project inside the Photoshop retouching on a digital photo by utilizing this interface. I did use it some other AI before with my work, but I think this way and that setup allowed us to use it quite a bit powerful system and also utilizing most important like control net and also additional extra. Thank you very much for watching this video all the way to the end. Your support is greatly appreciated. Please subscribe to the channel, give us thumbs up, share the video, and I really greatly appreciate all your support you guys provide for me on YouTube. Have a great day.